Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We had our first frost last night. It was beautiful. When I got up this morning, I could see the sun shining across the kind of frosty looking lawn and our dahlias completely, not completely black. I don't know if you've seen them yet, but um, yeah, it's kind of a like a refreshing change to me to have that frost come and take some things that we've been taking care of for a long time and I'm ready for a rest just for a little while. Still planning for next year already. Like I'm already doing the whole seed thing planning out how we're gonna do things better. I don't know, I think coming off of a current season like freshly, you're really, you've got fresh ideas on how you wanna do things differently. And Aaron's actually in this video. Hello. We, did, we experimented with it last week and most of you guys liked kind of seeing Aaron's face. We didn't, I told Laura, don't talk about it on purpose because, or don't talk about me being in there, just in case we, in there, in case we don't wanna use it. We yeah. can just ditch the footage. Um, but I, it worked out. And then I saw a couple people asking why I don't sit next to you. Mm -hmm. A couple of reasons. One, like both the cameras are like right yeah. in front of me here. And so I can control both cameras. If I was sitting where you are, it's a video huge pain for me to get up and control the cameras. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is what it looks like right here. You're taking a video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's my computer. So like when Laura's answering a question, I can actually get up and control like if the lighting changes or I need to, you know, adjust something. Also, I can do that. for me, it's super awkward to sit right next to somebody. I hate that. Like, and yeah. I don't know if somebody's being long winded with their answer. Like, where do I, what do I do with my eyes? Yeah. Where do you look? Like, do I look at you guys <laughs> or do <laughs> I look over this way and just like stare to the side? It just feels awkward. So this feels more natural. Well, it's funny. Like a, a lot of couples I've noticed, they go to a restaurant and they'll sit in the same booth, like side by side. And that's not us. No. Like, we're not, I don't know if that's a minority or, or not, but. Like, doesn't your neck hurt? What are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. A lot of people do it. Maybe the majority. But no. you and I not sit majority, across from each other. I don't think. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk <laughs> well, about it. Well, I think garden. everybody wants to know if what they do is normal or not. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, what's normal, right? Yeah. Let's jump into last week's videos. First one was planting for fall interest. Refresh me. With shrubs. ITF? Yep. Grass? By Burnham, I think, sure. right? Beautiful plants. <laughs> I have to re refresh myself because we do a lot of projects every single week. I should have probably looked over. Aaron got all the questions. I have not read a single one of these, so hopefully you didn't put throw any surprises in there any for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first comment was from Country Jess. When your coffee pot beeps at the same time as your GA notification goes off, that, my friends, is perfect timing. Makes me feel like it's going to be a great day. Oh, cheers. E says, is Espoma Organic your channel as well? All your videos are there too. We work pretty closely with Espoma Organic. We have for pff, five years. A long time, yeah. And so a lot of the content that we just let, like whatever content you guys want to use. We do use. that with pretty much all the, yeah. the people we work with. Yeah. Like if they, if they want to post it. They can post it. Yeah. We get that same question about Proven Winners channels too. Like I see yeah. Proven Winners is stealing your videos. They're not. They have permission to use yeah. whatever they want that has their stuff in it. You well, know? and, and um, we're pretty open with people, most people, like people we like. <laughs> like uh, just recently, Hoselink asked if they could use some clips from a video. Yeah. Like the, um, what was it, that Weeder. weed puller thing? Yeah. Like they didn't pay us to, you know, to show it in a video or anything. They sent but it to us. Yeah, free, they send but, it to us. Mm -hmm. But like they asked if they could use some of the clips and I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah. I think you are too. Yeah, for sure. Valentina said, did you ever think of making small hills or valleys in your garden? Since it's all a flat surface, maybe it gets, gives a little more interest. You know, we did talk about that. And we've talked about things that like even right now, we would have maybe done differently from the start. Like maybe creating more space, um, maybe a smaller cut flower garden and more space to do more of a bank, like a bigger bank of trees and things. Yeah, right. And I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, so in a way, I want to say that like, man, I wish there was more space out there. <laughs> There's a ton of space out there. Um, but I do kind of wish where the arbs are, where mm -hmm. we planted the arbs. I think, you know, here in five, six years or so, they'll be nice because yeah. they'll be tall and they'll start blocking off those houses in the subdivision. Um, I do kind of wish maybe we would have done like a 15 foot border mm -hmm. and done like arbs and other evergreens and trees, mm -hmm. maybe not deciduous trees. Cause I wouldn't want leaves falling in, in those people's yards. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess maybe that we, we could have changed, but, you, but then it's like, would you have put that little service road 15? Would you right. bump that? And then you start running out of space. 
running out of space. I know. It's it, all relative. It's it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we initially did the plan, we wanted to make sure there was access all the way around the perimeter of the property. Um, so we put in that lane all the way around. Well, and part of that came about because of your parents' garden, how they don't have any access anywhere in their garden. No. Like if they need to get large, <laughs> large tough. anything in there, they just kind of can't. Mm -hmm. Or they have to use their neighbor's property. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to, well, you can't with, you know, with the subdivision. Right. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you can't go through those people's backyards with yeah. fences and everything. So I wanted to have like a little ring road around mm -hmm. the perimeter, but you know, we probably should have done a, maybe a larger planting area and then the ring road. Hard to say. I know, it all like cuts into the fun stuff you get to do though, like the cut flower garden and the big lawn where we're gonna put all the shade trees. In the end, like you said, I don't know if, if you already said that, maybe we've talked about it before, <laughs> but in the end, I think you won't even really notice with the arbs growing up and all the other things we have going on out there and the orchard, like once that orchard is big, yeah, I, I don't think we'll notice it quite as much. Yeah or the surrounding area as much. We've also talked about like in the back formal garden that we do want to change up a bit. We've talked about berming up kind of in the back corner and putting some big stuff in right away. Um, but even that, I can't wrap my brain around it. I can't wrap my brain around doing something that's not natural to our natural area. Uh, Connor said, what happens if you don't divide plants? So typically, I mean, I don't really make it a common practice of dividing my plants. I just don't, I never really have. Um, the, the ones I do see suffering though are like uh, perennial grasses, ornamental grasses. If you don't divide those, t uh, typically they'll kind of like spread out and then start dying in the center. So you'll have kind of like a ring around a center dead spot. Um, so that can happen. Sometimes if you don't divide, plants will flop in the middle. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm like, the, I'm horrible to speak on that. Um, or even like do videos on that. I think we've done videos on dividing perennials in the past, but I just naturally, I mean, I've done it, um, but I don't do it as a rule. Like it's not something, a procedure I normally follow. It just seems like a whole lot of work. I'm like just let things be. Yeah. <laughs> kind of my motto. Sheila said, love the statue placement, perfect spot. I forgot we did move that statue out. I had, it was actually the statue Aaron got for me my, it was our first or second Christmas together. I don't remember. Cause you also got me those beautiful lampposts. I don't remember the order. It's like it, another life ago, yeah, it feels like. Yeah, long time ago. Anyway, I still have all those pieces and the uh, little girl statue was next to the blue spruce that fell down. And so she'd just been hanging out kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So I kind of like saw this spot out on the, in the South Garden, thought that is perfect. We need to move her out there. So we did. Uh, curious, how much input does Erin have in plant placements, especially in the South Garden? I see you mostly out there by yourself. Did you put this question in yeah. there on purpose? Uh, making decisions where you want plants to go. Though I'm sure that you have talked it over with him at some point. <laughs> Thanks for all that you do, especially your philanthropic, is that how you say it? philanthropic? I think so. Uh, work for your community. It makes a huge difference when everyone steps up to help. Um, so you and I make a lot of decisions together. Not about plant placement. You're pretty much like, I don't care where you put plants. Well, we I do about care trees. about shade trees. That's the only thing yeah. that I really care about. You know, we make, we make a lot of decisions together and a lot not together. Yeah. I don't know. You'll get my input on some things that you're not sure about. Uh huh. And then I'll, I'll weigh in. Usually you're kind of like, shouldn't have asked you because <laughs> I'll have an opinion that you don't like. Um, but like at the end of the day, most of the opinions that I give, I don't really care. It's kind of like, well, okay, so you're asking my opinion. I would maybe do it this way, but it's like, just do what you want. I do care about making sure that like infrastructure is put in correctly so that we don't have to tear it back up again. Mm -hmm. I, like the idea of doing something twice just kills me. The biggest question is, do you ever ask my opinion when you're buying all your tractor equipment <laughs> and all of your, your stuff? Like you that, know what? Never, that question's never asked the other direction. Well, cause people don't know, like people don't know all the stuff that I, I get, but I do talk to you ahead of time. And you're usually, Not you really. usually give me the same reaction I give you. It's kind of like, eh. I don't care. Just <laughs> yeah, like, do it. if you think it's gonna help, just mm -hmm. do what you know. Do what you need. To do. Right. Uh, Gundula said, "Gundula, I hope I pronounce that right. Will there be drip irrigation running to each of the shrubs? Yes, there will be. That's usually something that happens after I get done. Because I don't, you know, I don't know how much you guys want to see every single time. Because it's the same process every single time we run drip to something. Um, it's a really easy thing. Um, Paul's really good at it too. Yeah. So a lot of times we'll plant things and then just ask him to, you know, in like the next 24 hours, just put. A lot of times I don't even ask him. him and I go out there yeah, and I'm he like, just hey Paul, it. I just planted a couple shrubs. He's like, yep, saw him, got drip run to him. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Jay's Holiday Wonderland said, Whatever happened to the Vanderwolf Pyramid Pine Tree you planted up by the urns on the west side? Was it given away? Do you think you'll plant another one someday? We probably will plant another one. That one just did not like it out there. I don't know exactly what happened. It kind of like died a slow death. Do you remember that one? It was no, out I by don't. the pear tree when the fence was still there out on Poole's property before we bought it. No, I that, no. The pine tree. I planted like a pine tree and the pear tree and then I planted some shrubs out there. Uh huh. Did it just not? I think we ended up digging it up and. Oh, no, wasn't it in the road? Yeah, it was right in the roadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. did you just say that? No, but it, I mean, it was just right It was on the right where the road was gonna go and it was suffering and I think we just decided it wasn't worth trying to It was save. starting like the, the trunk was starting to split and like sap was running out. Was there an issue with the drip over there? I, I don't know, who knows. Yeah. I, it feels like such a long time ago at this point. Yeah, I think it was just a, a casualty. It was in the way, it wasn't, it didn't feel like something that we, it was worth the effort to mm -hmm. put in to try to turn the turn ship around. Turn the corner, yeah. Uh, Sheila said, would you consider planting a ginkgo tree? Yes, I actually have one in the high tunnel. Not high tunnel, it's the greenhouse now. Uh, ready to be planted. Uh, they are beautiful, they turn a gorgeous yellow in the fall. Yes, they do. They're so vivid and so bright. I just love them. Peggy said, does the tiger eye lose just its leaves or does it lose a little stick that the leaves are attached to like a walnut tree does? I think they kind of, they, they do that. I think the little branches come off as well as the leaves. This is the first time I've actually had tiger eyes personally in my own garden space. A lot of people plant them around here, um, especially in kind of a more natural setting because they will sucker. They don't sucker as fast as the older varieties of sumac, um, but they will naturalize. And I kind of want that in some areas out there. So it's perfect for this space. They look gorgeous. Like you look out there and your eyes are just drawn to these like bright orange red, like on fire shrubs. I love it. Next video is shrubs, bouquets, fall containers, and gazebo update. So I had a lot going on that day. I started off by planting an iceberg alley willow out in the new property. Beautiful icy blue leaves. I cannot wait to see some of these things grow. I mean, not some of them, all of them. I can't wait to see everything out there grow and fill in. Um, I had four bouquets I needed to make for a candlelight vigil. They were going to a candlelight vigil that night uh, for an organization called Project Dev, which is a nonprofit um, help that help people in domestic violence, domestic abuse situations. So I got that done. Then we went down to the Children's Relief Nursery. I planted up the four pots we took down there last, was it last spring or summer? I can't really remember. I think it was two springs ago. It, uh, yeah, my timeline's or a little fuzzy on that. Ago. But anyway, the, the summer plants were done and we needed to change them over for fall. I found some gorgeous evergreens to use in them too. So that'll take them through winter. And then we thought since we were out and about, we would run by the gazebo that's now in a park downtown, you know, that started off in our garden because I wanted to show you what it looks like, which I think it looks so much better down there. Yeah. They used uh, bigger beams, first of all, which mm -hmm. that was a huge problem. It always looked like the hood or the roof of that was just set up on these little matchstick beams right. here. They also made it taller. So the beams are a lot taller. It just looks more proportioned down there. I don't know. It looks really nice. I'm happy with that. Uh, Jazori said, seriously, Laura, your use of the color wheel is something to behold. Uh, those bouquets came out absolutely stunning. The way you put the colors together is like a conductor leading an orchestra. Oh, thank you. I don't always feel that way. I mean, sometimes I put something together and I feel like, oh, that's pretty. Like, I really like that. And there's a lot of times, especially with bouquets in jars like that, that I don't, like, I like putting together these, like, big, opulent with, like, produce in them, um, looking arrangements, and putting together, like, hand-tied bouquets and stuff is really not something I've practiced a lot at. Um, so oftentimes I get done with them, and I'm like, ooh, I wish that I could do it bigger, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so thank you for that comment. It was really nice. Sarah said, is there an address where we can send money towards projects like these? I'd love to be able to give back to a community that's doing these wonderful things. Did we link to those, to... Children's Relief Nursery and Project I don't Project think Dev. that we did. I don't know. Like, I would really, I mean, that's super, super sweet. I would recommend that you check with your local community. I don't know if you can go to, like, your chamber, probably your chamber of commerce, and figure out if there are some nonprofits doing that kind of work in your local area. Um, but maybe we could put the links of those down below. Yeah. They're definitely, um, I really like the, the premise. I like, like the Children's Relief Nursery. I love that. So they are also an organization organization, I have a problem with that word, that help kids in abusive situations, stressful situations, but they not only help the kids and like provide them a safe place to come, um, but they also like, they go down deeper. They go into like the family unit and they do like home visits and they follow through and provide support, not just to the kids, 
but to the parents who are maybe struggling and trying to, you know, mm -hmm. get by and, and make things work. And anyway, I really appreciate that premise. It's not just like a surface patch. It's like more of like, let's deal with this at a root level and let's get this handled. Yeah. And I really, I really like that approach a lot. Brittany said, would anyone know by chance what type of flower bush this is at 645 mark, the reddish one? Let me look really quick. Oh, that's the Locia. Um, so I don't know what variety that is. Actually, one of you guys sent me the seed from your garden for that. And I started them from seed in the greenhouse and they're really beautiful. Actually, one of you guys suggested that I do a Halloween inspired flower arrangement because they are brain looking. I think they call them the brain plant, right? Really? I don't even know what it looks like. Some celosias don't look like that. Some have more spiky blooms though, and some have that really like coral kind of look. They're really intense. And the stems on those are like this wide, but they're really thin from the side. So they're really you know, like, I don't want to say difficult to arrange with. They're interesting to arrange with for sure. Uh, BS said, I don't see, BS. <laughs> Did you include that just so I'd have to say that in a no. video? <laughs> I don't see a dappled willow anywhere on the property. Have you ever seen one? Uh, they're just beautiful. They are beautiful. Uh, no, we don't have one yet, but that's probably one that I will want to add. Uh, Lee said, Laura, what kind of flower preservative do you use and where do you get it, please? I know it's necessary, but don't have a clue other than that. You can just put in floral preservative on Amazon and you can find all kinds of stuff in tubs. I use the little packets that come on the grocery store flowers because I buy so many of those grocery store flowers throughout the off season that I usually just have a pile of them sitting in a drawer somewhere and that's so that's what I use. Alex said one question those purple fountain grasses that you removed I thought they could be transplanted to a larger pot or area where they can bush out again and be fine or do you just throw them out? Uh, they are an annual for us here. Uh, they're a zone 9 through 11. Uh, so you go on to say that we're in zone 9 and we lost a lot of our evergreens to the freeze in February, which is a huge bummer. I'm sorry about that. And I was thinking of replacing them with similar grasses. I thought they could stand our not so cold winter. Am I wrong? Well, if you're a zone 9 and they're a zone 9 through 11, they should come back for you. It depends on if you keep having freak uh, yeah. you know, storms like that, yeah. ice storms. Yeah, that's true. The other thing is that some annuals uh that say that they're annuals on the tags are actually perennial for a lot of people like what like um proven winter strawberries they say annual on the tag but it's like clearly a perennial. do they really for, say annual yeah on the for tag? like a bunch of people i mean i'm sure it's an annual for someone yeah they they say annual but they also say there's on four through nine right i don't know i don't think that's a typo i think that's a there's a bunch of legal things when it comes to like patenting plants and um, hybridizing things so like that could be like a legal requirement that they have to call it an annual so that huh. it doesn't uh, you know jump on top of something else I don't know the details of that but um, I don't think that it's a typo so it technically is an annual for people in zone three or lower right. but <laughs> they come back for us yeah it's huh. like uh, Mrs. Siciliano said when do you find time to research new plants you want to add to your garden uh, I mean I don't really do a lot of research well, um, for example, like Proven Winners comes to us since we work with them, mm -hmm. they'll they'll call like once a year. We'll do like a Zoom call mm -hmm. or, you know, before they used to we come. We talk to them more than once a year. <laughs> yeah, they but I mean. They call once a year. They but come. like we, there's a once a year, uh, hey, let's chat about the new annuals. Yeah. And I think like they probably do that with like every garden center too, oh don't my. you think? Like yeah. growers and stuff. Like right. they, want every, they want a lot of people knowing about new plants. Uh -huh. So they call us as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's like an opportunity for us to that's learn about That's always fun. They have like a whole presentation, yeah. you know, of all the colors and what they look like and yeah. So yeah, you do get kind of an idea of some of the things that might work in your space. Also, I think your parents owning a garden center probably is like conducive to you learning about new things because they also get like packets from companies mm -hmm. about new things coming out or whatever. Right. Uh, next video is trimming our boxwoods. <sighs> That video actually took me three weeks to complete. Not that it takes three weeks work, worth of work, but I just like had time to do like this little section and then it was like a week in between doing that section and picking up and doing the next section, which it's nice to do stuff like that, but we typically don't like film videos that way for sure. Usually, I mean, a project will take two days at the most. So like stretching something out that long and I didn't even get them all done. I'm looking at the ones that were on the fireplace and I didn't get to those and I won't because it's gonna be 28 tonight. So they're just gonna be a tiny bit on the fluffy side. They still look pretty good. Anyway, I was really happy with how most of them looked because I hadn't touched any of them all season, right? Did I touch any of them? I don't think so. I don't know that I did 
any boxwood trimming this last, last spring. A lot of them needed a chance to recuperate and kind of fill back in and grow after a, we had a freak freeze that one year that yeah. really went deep into a lot of our boxwoods. Yep. Um, and so I think that they did benefit from that. A few of our hedges are still struggling from spider mites fairly bad, like on the west side, on both sides of the driveway, around the urn in Versailles pretty thick with spider mites. So we'll have to be very diligent about that this next season. Uh, BU said, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. Ellen Montgomery, Anna Green Gables. Yeah, at the end of that video, I think I showed the ash tree and I was like, oh, October. I love this month. It's such a great month. Wendy Healy said, hi there, I'm just starting to grow some hedges at my place. What type of box do you plant? I've got several types of boxwoods in this garden. I have winter gems, uh, which are kind of like the old standard. And then there's sprinters, which are the improved version of winter gems. Uh, and they grow a little bit faster. They're a tiny bit more, maybe more fine leaved, narrow leaved, I guess, but not much. Um, and then I do have some green mountains, which are the cone type. I have a couple of Mount Brunos and containers, which are the dwarf type. I've got some North Stars right here that stay smaller too, and they're darker green. Um, do I have any other varieties? How many more are there? Well, there's the variegated, there's like Wedding Ring. Hmm. Um, there's Grand Blandy. And there's like Korean, right, Korean boxwoods and English boxwoods. Um, there's other varieties I cannot think of. Velvet something, green velvet, is that one? There's probably so many we don't even yeah. know about. Anyway, uh, so yeah, primarily though we have Green Mountain, Winter Gem, and Sprinters. Chelsea said, wait, am I, tripp am I tripping or did the plants change and pumpkins disappeared from the beginning of the video? Yeah, see that's what happens when you stretch a video out for three weeks, you get a lot of other projects done in between and so the when beginning of the video was very different. <laughs> yeah, it was very different. Uh, Sherilyn said, it, it occurred to me a day after watching this, last year or so, not sure of the timing, you backed off using wilt stop when you trimmed your boxwoods. So based on usage, do you think perhaps the wilt stop helped or hindered the spider mites? Did I ever use wilt stop on the ones that we have the spider mites on? I want to say that you did at one point. And I think we kind of agreed that for us, it didn't appear to make a difference on no. things outside, but for for cut evergreens, yeah. like wreaths and things like that that you make, oh, it seems to make a huge difference. It does, yeah. Sense and Stone said, I like to put up a hedge of boxwoods, but I'd like them to stay short. What kinds grow small? Mount Brunos. I mean, you can keep, sprinters will grow like two to four feet tall and wide. You can keep those down, like trimmed down pretty little. The North Stars I have behind me. You can see them a little bit in the, yeah, in the shot. Oh yeah, I keep them like a foot a foot tall and may, not even a foot wide and they've been there for a long time. Yeah. I keep hitting them. <laughs> I've got these big old gargantuan arms. Anyway, I keep most of mine the size that I want them to be. There's other, like the Mount Brunos, I think they top out 18 inches tall and wide. Um, my mom has a bunch of those that she keeps in spheres because they're just naturally easy to keep in spheres because they stay so small. So anyway, Janet said around the 1850 time frame, there's a tree behind you that has a beautiful fall colored leaves. What kind of tree is it? I'm guessing it's the sensation box elder, but let me, let me double check. Oh, that's the ash tree. So we have an ash tree up in our front yard and it's beautiful. It turns like bright orange. There's some yellow in it. There's some purple in it. It is absolutely gorgeous. And we didn't get to see that color last year because of our weird member. We had no- Was it last year or the year before? It could have been maybe the year before that it froze and all the leaves like froze on the trees yeah. and then they just turned brown and fell off. Um, and so this year we got to see the beautiful color and then we had horrible wind this last weekend and it took so many of the leaves off of everything that they were all looking so like picturesque. And then they're all on the ground <laughs> in like one day. Angela said, what about a laser level for the uneven boxwood? Would that work? Well, would it had to yeah, bounce off something though, right? Maybe, like, but I, like what if your ground isn't level? You know what I mean? Like, so you, you use you a just laser pick level. You a spot, right? And like, I want them to be this level. Yeah, right? I, I don't know. We could try it, yeah. I suppose. Devin said, how long does it take from planting your boxwood to having a structured hedge? You know, it really depends. It depends a lot on what size of boxwood you start with. 
also how closely together you plant them. I mean, you might read a tag that says this boxwood can get four feet tall and four feet wide. Well, if you space your boxwoods four feet apart from each other, or even three, it's gonna take them forever <laughs> to become a hedge. We plant like a foot and a half apart, no matter really what size these plants are to begin with. Um, in Versailles, we started with sprinters that were tiny. The quick turn size. Yeah, and it took four or five years for them. Right now, this year, is the first year they feel like they're kind of connecting. You can still see a little separation, especially at the bottom. You can tell where each individual one is. So I think next year, so it'll be year five maybe for mm -hmm. them, they'll be all grown in. But the other ones we planted, like around the fireplace uh, area, were five gallon size and it only took a couple seasons for them to really fill in. The sprinters on the west side, they were maybe two or three gallon size and I would say maybe three years. And also we're supposing that we don't ac accidentally trim them at the wrong time, or they don't suffer some kind of a winter dieback, or they don't get spider mites. I mean, there are also those factors that you have to kind of- There's a lot of things that can set them back. Yeah, well here anyway. I mean, yeah. I feel like, I well, feel like we Well, you know, in other areas you can have blight. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, you know? you're right. I so mean, there's things we don't deal with here, right. but that others do. I feel like the boxwood hedge are like the main thing in our garden that are a, a push for mm. our environment. Yeah. Everything else, I mean, everything does well, and boxwoods grow well here, but keeping them very tidy and structured and trimmed, it's a kind of a tricky business here. Next video is project updates, amazing sweet potato and ornamental corn harvest and tree pruning. So that was another day I just kind of needed to get a bunch of stuff done, and I wanted to show you how things were looking out in the garden. I could look at the forecast and knew that we were kind of closing in on these frosty days. Um, and so I knew it was gonna take some things. So I showed you around the cut flower garden where I had planted both flowers and vegetables as late fall crops. So I planted them in July and everything's looking really good out there or was looking really good out there, I should say, uh, until last night. And then I had one sweet potato plant that took and I had an amazing 36 pound harvest from one plant. Like imagine if all 25 of those slips had taken. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> too, too, too many. I would be giving them away, which would have been fun too. Yeah. Um, and then Benjamin and I harvested all the glass gem ornamental corn in our raised bed and it's beautiful. I've got a couple projects I still want to do with those. Maybe one today. We'll see. And then Aaron and I tackled our honey locust trees up in the Versailles garden. They were just like every year they weigh they weigh way down mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so they kind of block vision and they start scraping on the top of cars. So we took care of that. Sandy said, this is why gardening is so much like life. Always a learning experience. Just when we think there's a loss, we learn after a brief time, there's a win. And that was the sweet potato. I had considered not really showing like last couple of years, year before last, my sweet potato harvest was okay. Um, last year it was a bust. And this year I'm like, one plant survived. I'm not gonna even show this harvest. Like it's gonna be kind of lame. Um, and then I just kept digging and digging. And I bet you there are still sweet potatoes in there. I probably. Because I, I dug around pretty good, and then I was just, I don't know, like, how far out do you go? I think there's probably still some in there. Um, Flora said, terrible sweet potato envy here. I'm not familiar with the term slips. What does that mean? Yeah, so slips are just little cuttings of plants, and that's how my parents' garden center has always re received the sweet potatoes. They come in bundles of usually 20 or 25, and they're just these tiny little slips. Sometimes they have a, a little bit more of an extensive root system. Sometimes they have like one little hair root and the plant looks black. And uh, you know, here it can be a little bit of a weird crop to put in the ground. They like heat and a lot of heat and they need quite a long season to grow. So the fact that we got 36 pounds of really nice sized tubers, that was pretty amazing. I'm really happy with it. Antoinette said, when and how did you plant these? Uh, which ones? The, the sweet potatoes, the corn or the fall crops? There are videos out there of all three of those things. Faith said, the real question now is how many sweet potato slips will you plant next year? Probably 25. <laughs> We're gonna have to build a raised bed like for those. Like a thousand pounds of yeah. sweet potatoes. Well then, can you imagine all of them? We can put in crates in front of the garden center and put a big free sign on it. Yeah. I love it. It would be fun. That would be fun. Um, yeah, so we'd have to build a raised bed for sure because they need to be in raised bed mix. I think that's one of the reasons why they did so well. Well, I did have Biotone Starter Fertilizer planted with them, but they were in brand new fresh raised bed mix. It's really lofty and like the tubers can, you know. Oh, by the way, speaking of that, um, I got word we're supposed to get more of that Asmoma raised bed mix uh -huh. um, for the Hartley raised beds. Oh, good. And for the and blackberry for the, bed. Yeah. Good. It's so like I, coming maybe in a, in a week or so. I have the or blackberry less. plants. 
like ready. They've been in cans all season long. Really? Yeah. Can you still plant them this late? Oh yeah. No big deal. Uh, Florian said, hey, Laura and Aaron, I was wondering, I know you have people to help you with garden care, but do you also have someone helping you with security? Don't you have problems with followers trying to look inside your property? Yeah, we do. We do have people that show up. Just like in spite of the huge <laughs> private property. Yeah. No trespassing sign. In well, the and the thing is, you want to assume that everybody has like the best of attention intentions. They just maybe like lack a little bit of social awareness. You know, but we don't know. We don't know. And so, you know, you have to be careful. But we have a pretty robust security system and a lot of cameras. Mm -hmm. um, like, so robust that I've set it off and the police have showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That robust. Yeah. Um, it works, though, really well. And they well. come pretty quick, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not super concerned because I feel like we've got, you know, pretty much, like, the next step for security would be, like, having 24 hour, you know, like armed guards, which I don't think is ever going to happen, you know, so. We have armed guards around the entire perimeter of our property. <laughs> Maybe I'm just saying we don't have armed <laughs> yeah, guards, but we throw, do. To throw you off. Uh, Rachel said, what variety of locust trees do you have? My new house has a golden locust in, in both the front and backyard. I love them. I think we have both um, sunburst and we have shade master. We have uh, some that are more dark green all the time, and then we have some that have bright, kind of brighter yellow new growth, which is typical of a sunburst. They have very similar growth habits. I didn't plant them. They were here when we moved in, so I can't be 100% positive, but based on just what I saw, you know, from the garden center and working there for a long time, I think those are the two varieties we have. And I do love them too. In fact, they're so pretty right now, and they're so easy maintenance that I think we're gonna put a few up in the, big lawn mm -hmm. because they get good size they provide really good just like dappled shade it's not thick shade Does that makes it thick shade <laughs> deep shade whatever <laughs> i don't think thick shade is the right term but i think it'll be better for grass honestly because it, they do allow some light to come through yeah hillary said can you add a link to that awesome pole chainsaw you're using i definitely need one of those it's okay i will say the the pole chainsaw is nice however like the fiskars you know, pole saw that we have. For most jobs, like, don't you think? Although, I, they're not that different in price. Really? The, the, the pole chainsaw is not that expensive. But the pole chainsaw is so much lighter. I have a hard time with that. The, or I mean, the Fiskars. The Fiskars. The pole alone. pruner is pole a pruner. lot lighter. Right, right, right. Sorry. Like the manual, where you just yeah. like, and it cuts pretty pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other nice thing about the Fiskars one um, is that it's, it's really easily adjustable. Mm -hmm. So I like that, whereas the the DeWalt one that we have, it takes quite a bit of work to switch the adjustment, the right. switch the size. It does. But we can link them both down below. Yeah. We really try to remember to link them down below. <laughs> Next video was transplanting 14 boxwoods. And you guys, that project was probably one of the most satisfying ones I've done in a, a I while. I think you've wanted to do boxwoods in I have. those I for, push for it every like, year. since the beginning. I know. And I think the reason that we haven't is because we've always wanted to like try out new annuals. Mm -hmm. It was kind of the reason we did it was like a great place to to do like a big display of annuals. Right. And they've been pretty every year. They have been. But I, I've been craving. I love the simplest. I love how simple they look. And I decided just to leave them, which is what most of you guys, your opinion was just to leave them simple and clean and tidy looking. Uh, and the fact that I had 14 total boxwoods sitting in an area that had to be moved, they need to be moved because 11 of them lined or they did still line at that point. A concrete pad is still there that Chad needs to come get, but he's going to come get that concrete pad. And in that process, those boxwoods would have been mangled, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. I don't know, though. Chad is really good. He'd probably like lift that whole concrete thing out yeah. and you'd never know it ever existed. He's surprisingly good at not making a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he talked about it one time. He was like, yeah, you know, like an extra 10 minutes for me might save somebody like a couple days worth of work of cleanup. Isn't that awesome? We're so lucky. Somebody who thinks that way. Yeah. Like they're, tr you know, trying to save people. Yeah. That's why effort. everybody wants him. He's like wanted all over yeah. the valley. Anyway, um, I dug them out because I know it's going to be easier for everybody if they're, they're moved. And then I had three very close by where kind of the, the pines used to be. So I had 14 total boxwoods about the same size and 14 total pots along that fence line. There's cheddar. We have both kitties. Anyway, to get 14 boxwoods that size, you know how expensive that would be? Oh, man. Because that would be like, I mean, I've... What do you think that size would be, like $150, $200? At least, because five-gallon boxwoods would be, you know, like maybe, and they'd be kind of like loose and not very tight, and those are this big. Of course, they look 
when I looked at them in the ground from above, I thought these aren't going to look big enough for the pots. They might be okay. And they are perfection. Yeah. Like the proportion is perfection. Anyway, the thing I did not mention in that video is that um, moving plants into containers, like there were some questions about are they going to survive, you know. I have maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, gardening is all all about risk, right? It's always risky. Uh, they needed to be moved. The fact that they're in pots rather than the ground might like give you a percent or two less risk, or I mean, less guarantee, I guess, that they'll survive. But they're big pots. We keep them on a very regular schedule of watering. I have wintered over. I've got like ten, I think. I counted up ten boxwoods in containers, iron, resin, and terracotta that have survived for years. Um, because also the other thing, the rule of thumb, it, for the least amount of risk is to plant evergreens and perennial shrubs, those things you want to winter over in pots. You choose things that are rated two zones lo lower than your growing zone. So in my case, we're technically a six now. I would need to choose things that are rated at a zone four. Typically boxwoods are a zone five. So I kind of like don't have that buffer. Um, but I'm not super worried about it because, I, you know, they were. But those are in big pots. In those big are in pots, large pots with yeah. a lot of soil. And as long as, you know, you water them during the winter time. I'll probably top dress. I'm, I don't think I'll stick evergreens in there, but I'll probably top dress with pine cones or something clean like that. And those do provide a little bit of extra, yeah. you know. Um, anyway, I'm so happy with them, though. They are so beautiful. Uh, BU said, Garden Answer starring Laura, producer Russell, executive director Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin is more and more, like, I feel like we need to get him a little kid camera, like something on a tripod yeah. that he feels like, because he comes and grabs, like, I I'm so worried he's going to accidentally delete part yeah. of the video so I've already filmed and I let him like I usually he wants to be like you yeah I usually stop whatever um, take I'm on and then start a new one that he oh, can sure. use you know just in case you know it would be an accident but it's so fun to have him out there involved in what we're doing Denise says uh, could you move the pots into the gravel to mark the future curve I know you would need to move drip etc but just an idea and I did see that from several of you guys I mean, it's something we definitely could do but I don't know. I think uh, one of my like objectives would be to plant pretty heavily in terms of like evergreen interest. Mm -hmm. But we you could have those denoting the the curve the curve the, and the, then just have a bunch of evergreens behind them. You're right. The thing about it for me moving them now is that we just had those those brick pads. Yeah. Put and so they're all level right now. They all have drip running to them, and they're all like really. Like, it would seem a shame to get rid of some of them. Yeah, not until we're ready to kind of get rid of the gravel and tear up that area, probably. Uh, Darren said, I had a large container of super tunias this year that was doing great up until a heavy rainstorm in late July that took off most of the blooms. It stayed green the rest of the summer, but never bloomed again. What causes them to stop blooming? I mean... Budworms? Yeah, you're right. Budworms for sure. But usually you would see indicators that budworms are there. You would see like the little budworm specks you know, the little black specks that they leave behind. Um, but if you lost all your blooms at one time and you didn't have bedworm problems before then, I would say, I don't know, maybe they needed to have more food, you know, kind of a kickstart again. Maybe they needed to be trimmed a little bit so that they had more energy to put into new growth and new blooms. That's a shame though, because that's a lot of the season that you didn't, you weren't able to enjoy blooms. That's a bummer. Sorry. Linda said, where did you get those beautiful pots? Unique stone. I love them. I don't remember exactly what size, but I think they're the extra large jumbo jardinier. Jardinier. Jardinier is how they said it's pronounced. So we asked the company. Unique Stone has a lot of pots you like. I feel like you've gotten most of the pots I, from them. We do have a fountain coming from like. them that I'm yeah. excited about. Um, but I love the finish of their stuff. It's a little bit more aged looking. Like it has more of a, like it's been here for a while patina about it, which I appreciate. It doesn't look quite as molded. Um, and typically like you don't notice seams as much. There isn't as a evident of a seam in, in things. And I really, I, I think they're beautiful pieces. Beautiful. Julia said, if you don't plant anything in with the boxwoods and decide to leave them simple, will you top dress with mulch or compost since you can see the soil? Not a bad idea. Mulch or uh, pine cones probably. Cynthia said, how will they do in the cold winter? Won't they freeze in the pot? So, you know, they, it depends on how cold it gets. I mean, like I said, it is a risk. I might lose one or two or hopefully not, but I might, in which case, like I have others I can pop up and put in there. Um, and cause I really would like to use them throughout next season too. 
and do something different, you know, mm -hmm. actually plant them up. But um, usually if we keep them on a watering schedule, we do watering every two weeks, even through the winter, because we don't get a ton of precipitation. Even if there's snow on the ground, it doesn't mean it's melting and giving the roots what they need. And they don't need to be wet. They just need to be mildly moist enough not to like freeze dry. I think that's the most important thing for them. And typically uh, most of those, three of them are sprinters and the rest of them are winter gems. We might notice a color difference because sprinters aren't supposed to bronze out as much as winter gems do. So they may take on a little bit of a different vibe in the winter and then they'll green back up in the spring. We'll just have to kind of wait and see how they do. I noticed in that video that the sprinters were a little bit more bronze. Uh huh. And um, I don't know if you knew, but where you got the sprinters from, the drip wasn't working for like a, a good long while. I did while. notice the color difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were struggling hard and we fixed the drip, but it was because of the Hartley. Um, like one of the drip lines got cut and it got fixed later, but anyway, oh, just, I did not know that. Yeah. Cause I so, never saw anything like die. I mean, there's yeah. some kind of clothes. There, I noticed but... in the video, I was like, Ooh, those don't look great, but I knew what they had been through. Mm. So they were interesting. I was surprised that they even were alive, honestly, Really. for how long oh, the drip go. wasn't working. Tough ones. Uh, Laura said, just wondering why you didn't till the pumpkin squash plants into the soil. We thought about it. And then we thought about the vines gumming up the tiller because even like the roots of some weeds will gum up our tillers. I don't know on a tractor tiller, like that's a pretty, it's a pretty strong... powerful tiller, but well, it's a powerful tractor and, and pumpkin vines. I don't know if you like have gone down there and, but they're hollow and they're not like, I think they would have broken up. Okay. But they went to Paul's pigs. <laughs> so the pigs got to feast on them. Um, so we've been dumping leaves every time the lawn gets mowed. Uh, or if we have a windstorm and a bunch of leaves fall, we go with the mower, pick up all the leaves, and then we're dumping everything in It's there. actually perfect right now because it's picking up grass and the leaves. Yeah. So we're getting both the carbon and the nitrogen. So it's, it's like a, like, yeah, what's what's being dumped on there is nice. I'll probably sprinkle some blood meal in there anyway, though, to kind of help yeah. speed it up a bit. Um, next video was antiquing with my mom and a parking lot tree tour. Uh, you grow Gail said, love that Laura entertains herself discussing the trees in the doctor's parking lot. <laughs> we were smacking downtown Boise, like in the middle of this, you know, tons of buildings. And when I was sitting in the car, just looking around, I thought, you know, I need to notice this stuff more. I mean, there's usually pretty things to see all over the place. And it's really hard when you're, you know, kind of in this huge area of pavement and buildings to notice that kind of thing. But somebody who had done that parking lot did a good job, I yeah. think, picking things out pretty. that contrasted each other really well. Anyway, I thought it might be, since we're you know all into that sort of thing, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. DH said, completely random question. Are you not worried about leaving your purchased items in the back of an open truck? No. One of the benefits who's of gonna, living in a more rural area. Yeah, it's true, but who's gonna steal like this massive plant stand? You know? You never know. Um, have you ever had anything stolen? We haven't out of the back of the truck. I had a hitch stolen one time. Oh, you did? Yeah. When? With the ball. Three or four years ago. Really? Yeah. Just I was parked somewhere probably oh. and it, somebody pulled it out. You guys want to know something interesting. My parents had a truck stolen at they the garden it. center. My dad, my dad found it this yeah. morning. Like it was stolen two days ago. Uh huh. And my dad found it parked in, at somebody's house, like three like blocks nearby. up. <laughs> Oh, what an idiot. I, like throw a tarp over it or something yeah. like stealing trucks 101 yeah jeez louise oh, so anyway funny. so yeah my dad found it and called the police and he thought about like i'm just gonna get my keys and take it it wasn't like it was a new truck i mean it was it was a field truck it was a field truck it's you know so it's not as if you yeah. know oh my goodness you know right i Somebody mean it sucks like it's, cut know. the fence and yeah, yeah. anyway um Love Mother Daughter Day had one of the had one the other week with my own daughter. We like different things, but we still love each other's company. And whatever happened to mail call videos? We stopped doing those. Ooh. Spring. Yeah. Uh, did you lovingly ask people not to send you gifts anymore? It did seem overwhelming at times, but so nice of your, of your viewers to do so. That was just always such a hard thing because I know some people's a lot of people's love language is gift giving mm -hmm. and so you want to respect that and you know be thankful and grateful and be a grace gracious receiver too because that's how people like those type of people express their gratitude gratitude and so you don't want to be like well no i don't want that kind of gratitude you need to give me gratitude in a different way yeah. <laughs> you know you don't want right. to do that and so it was awkward i never asked for mail times i never asked to be sent anything 
ever. Um, and so it was one of those things that just kind of crept up on us and we didn't really know. It kind of felt like it was, a, it was sort of spiraling out of yeah. control where like too many things were showing up and it, it felt a little dirty because, you know. It felt like doing them was a method. Encouraging of, uh, Yeah, of encouraging that. Um, so we still receive stuff. Um, we are handling it differently um, now. And I don't know, at some point we might do it. Like maybe in the winter time, yeah. it will be something that surfaces again. Um, but yeah. Uh, Joyce said, can we talk about the Garden Answer coffee table book and maybe a calendar too? Those are things that we always are talking about doing yeah. and not really knowing how to execute exactly because I am so difficult. Well, yeah, to, you're pretty particular yeah. on what you want. Yeah. And you, you're so particular that it's like all the ways that, for like from a business standpoint, because I'm more of like the numbers person and you're the I want it to be perfect person, mm -hmm. which is good because, you know. But <laughs> if you make everything perfect, then it's like, well, the cost ends up being like, Fifty dollars per calendar because you've chosen Anybody all the nice options. Anybody want a fifty dollar calendar? Because that's yeah, how and, we can make it happen. And so, if you make it affordable, then it's like, well, you didn't make any money. You know, you spent a lot of effort doing it, but you didn't make any money because, mm -hmm. or you could just charge a ton of money, and, I don't and feel, then wrong. it feels dirty because yeah. then it's like, then people are like, how much money are they making on it? Yeah. So, anyway, so that's just, that's our plight. Yes, it is a plight. Uh, Lala's, Lala Palooza said, do you have ash borers, small green beetle that bores into the ash trees and eventually kills trees from the center? Yes, we do. We are plagued with them here in Ontario, Canada, and have sadly had to cut all our ash trees down, which have decimated our town boulevards. It's so sad. Our city planted a huge alley of ash trees, and we were all kind of going like, you know, down at the garden center, we know what t it takes. You have to use a systemic insecticide to keep borers out. We have a couple of ash trees in our garden one of which has bore damage horribly bad the one in front is not so bad um, and i'm not against systemic insecticide because i think if you use it responsibly at the right time of the year you're fine but i know a lot of people have opinions about that and it was all because of one person who used it at the wrong time it was here in oregon yeah. they used it at the wrong time and it gave it just it was a whole big thing anyway but yes we do have them unless we treat with the systemic and then um, we could say goodbye to them as well and they're just gorgeous trees um, so you know in this the case of the city I think that was a poor choice because I would never I would never put in a tree in mass like that that mm. requires a bunch of, of chemical yeah you want to put in something that's resistant and that's a lot of the reason why we've taken out like the big elm trees that we had I, there's no way I was gonna treat those with chemical every year they were huge. It would require so much, and that just felt that felt wrong to do. So we have taken out a lot of things that were plagued by things like that, disease pressure or insect pressure, and we're replacing them with things that we don't have to do that with. So anyway, yes. Uh, Pella said, does your mom ever get mad or have a stern word for anyone? I just can't picture it. I bet she was not the disciplinarian when you were growing up. She most definitely was. The disciplinarian my dad is a huge softy and my dad never was the one to discipline us really i mean he would back my mom and my mom was home with us though mm. my mom was not the type to say wait till your dad gets home ever she took care of it right when it happened and i think that that's good um but i think i don't, I don't know. know though my mom did that a couple times oh, wait like, for your dad and then you're just like the wrath is coming. <laughs> yeah, it's almost worse. Yeah, like the, the build up. The build up is yeah, worse I think than the wisely punishment. placed. That would probably be a good thing. Yeah. To do. Um, no, my mom was a disciplinarian, and at this point in my life, I respect that greatly. I'm super glad she was. She did a couple of bold moves in my childhood that really, because I was, I was more of a wild kid. I mean, I'm the middle child. My brother was always very like studious and very, um, I mean, he got his fair share, but it was later on, <laughs> later on in life. And my sister is a pleaser and my sister's chill and she never caused my, my parents any issues. But I was the one that was skipping school and hanging out with the wrong kids and doing the wrong stuff. And my mom was on it, on it. 
and she did some things that were good for me. Didn't she say she was going to pull you out? Well, I think I maybe shared it before, but one time in middle school age, I think it was in eighth grade, and I was skipping school and hanging out with boys and doing stuff I shouldn't be doing, and um, she pulled me out of school one day, which she would do on occasion um, to surprise us kids and take us for a one-on-one -on -one day to Boise to go clothes shopping or whatever, have lunch out. So I thought, sweet, you know, we're going out to go do something fun. She pulled away from the school, all fine, and then we stopped and parked like a block away from the school. And she just looked at me and she's like, you either go back and drop all of your friends today or you're homeschooling tomorrow. And I knew she was serious. She, she was working at that point, but I knew she would quit her job and she would follow through. Like that was the kind of mom she was. Like she meant business. And I knew like, so I went back and I'm like, okay, can't be friends with all you guys anymore. Best thing that ever happened to me, honestly, I mean, there's a lot of good things that yeah. happened to me, but in terms of being disciplined and having a parent that knew what was going on and stayed involved enough to know, like, I need to intervene at this point, and I'm glad she did. Anyway. <sighs> <laughs> it makes me, like, kind of, I don't know, Benjamin seems like a pleaser at this point. I was, like, getting so frozen at this point. <laughs> um, Benjamin is a pleaser. I don't know how Samantha's going to be. I mean, we'll have to see as her personality comes out. Um but we'll see what we get for kids. Yeah. But I want to be the same kind of mom who like is very in tune with what her kids are doing. I, I think we will be. Yeah. Okay, I think this might be our last video, which is good because I'm like <sighs> starting to feel the chill creep in here. Planting some rough looking stuff. So this video uh, was a faith in planting video because I gathered up a bunch of things that look really rough from the season that just had, they've had to endure all of our wind our high heat, you know, and they looked bad. <laughs> Some things need to be cut back. Some had horribly burned leaves, but that is just reality and that's what happens, especially if you try to save plants. Those of you guys who buy things early in the season thinking, I love that, I'm gonna plant it somewhere, and then like six months later <laughs> thinking, oh my, that doesn't look, that's a shadow of what it looked like when I first bought it. We have those moments, all of us. Zio said, I sure enjoy these mystery beginnings when this, when the, with the suspense of what is Laura doing now? Oh, that was because the um, the garage door opening. Oh, it wasn't like an immediate me. Yeah, hey guys. Yeah. Um, it's so nice to see how spaces like the studio help you accomplish your objectives, like showing us these plants in a quiet space. It is such a huge blessing to have that space. It's come in so incredibly handy. And you'll probably see us in there more and more as it gets more chilly because it's like on the edge of being comfortable out here. Do you remember we did a couple recaps in the snow? Because we were like, we want the snow as a background. And I'm like... Yeah. trying to do the video. I love that you give these plants a chance to add their beauty to your property. Faith was a perfect theme. As a parent, I know your lives will only get busier as your precious children grow. I would be satisfied with, what with whatever videos you do produce. <laughs> My mouth is frozen. Even if they are fewer and shorter so that you have plenty of personal time. I wish you didn't need to spend long hours in the evening reviewing and editing videos when you've already put in busy days. These years will fly by. You've created beautiful gardens and landscaping and a beautiful marriage and a family and a community of followers with a positive and joyful mindset. I'm a grateful. Uh, I'm grateful for being a recipient of your knowledge, kindness, and inspiration. And I always wish the best for you and all your family and the family of GA enthusiasts. Holy moly, that's nice. We've talked about our schedule this winter, you know, because we keep saying that we might go down to five videos. You want to go down to five videos a week, and we. It's something we might try, like just as a warning. We might try in January when things are just kind of like quiet. They're quiet outside, um, you know, after the whole holidays, or maybe like right after Christmas. We'll take a little break right after Christmas and then start in with, um, you know, five day a week videos. Yeah. That might be a good thing just to start the year off a little bit more chill and relaxed and then kind of like amp up into our busy season. Yeah. When it's almost like you have to post seven videos a week or you get so behind because we're like just rocking through projects. Barreling through, yeah. yeah. So anyway. Karen said, kind of random, but how do you keep your lawn weed free and so uniform? I'm struggling with weeds galore in the lawn and even with some new seeded areas, it's weeds with lawn and patchy. Does anyone have any tips? Well, with ours, we did a lot of hand weeding this year, like a lot. And I do think that that was beneficial because um, you can wait until your grass is up. And I think you need to mow it, what, like four times or something before you can really apply any kind of... From the time you seed. From the time you seed um, till the time that you've mowed it four times and the grass is strong enough to withstand like being sprayed with 
broadleaf weed killer or whatever mm -hmm. you're using, uh, which we have been using the lawn weed brew, which has been a good one for us. So that's basically what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then make sure your grass is fertilized. That's a big one too. You wanna keep your actual grass healthy and robust because it will start smothering weeds out as well. Yeah. Christy says, when a plant tag lists the height of a flowering plant, perennial to be specific, is it the foliage height or the height including the flower? Seems like a simple answer, but I've often wondered. Um, you know, oftentimes I'll see on a hookera plant, uh, for example, it's just a perennial, I'll see eight to 10 inches. That does not include the bloom height. I think they're talking about the bulk of the plant. You know, if you get more height, and sometimes it'll have both heights on there, like it'll have eight to 10 inches um, garden height and then like landscape height, I don't know, hmm. it's taller. Um, I would err on the side of it being like the bulk of the leaf canopy being that height. Next question, in the past videos, you've talked about making a home renovation channel. So is there any chance we're going to have that channel any sooner? We just talked about that the other day. Yeah, not probably not very soon. Um, we're probably looking at maybe like a two to three year plan. We have a lot of things we want to change about the house and it, like all the projects keep leading into the next thing. So I feel like it would end up being like a pretty big renovation. Because we do a lot of it at the same time, which means we need to yeah, it's like that. if you need an electrician to come in, let's do all the electric at the same time. All Let's do all the floors at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be torn up for, yeah, like a bulk of it will be torn up all right. at the same time. So I think, yeah, probably would take a little while to plan and save. And so it could be a little while before we do but that. But we've even talked about when we do smaller um, projects, I'm getting ready to make a bunch of curtains, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is there any room to do that on a different channel? Not the highlights channel, not our main channel for sure. Um, but at, in the channel maybe where we post really sporadically, like there's no schedule to it. You have no idea what kind of contents you're coming your way. Like maybe I feel like making curtains or maybe I'm going to do this or that. I don't know, I kind of almost feel like you could just, we could just put it on the highlights channel. A I lot of those kinds of things. I don't know, things. it's still so garden related on the highlights channel. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like highlights channel for anything? Does anything go? Or should we do kind of a, a another channel that's completely random? I don't know. Uh, Cadre 500 says, love seeing the new properties progress. Any plans for huge drifts of spring bulbs out there this fall? To the tune of 12,500 bulbs possibly? That's coming up here pretty quick. Uh, Preon said, "What? Uh, why don't you rent a trench digger sod cutter to edge your grass walkways? It'd be so much easier. Yeah, we were talking about that. One, it makes it a little difficult because we don't know where any of the sprinklers are. <laughs> like, or, you know, I don't know, that first cut in, I just, I feel better about doing it manually. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I did a machine, it would be easy to get off really fast. Yeah, maybe. When I'm doing it manually, it's more methodical, it's slower. Also, we live in a small area and I've called around and I, I don't know that there's an edger to be found here in this area, like maybe in Boise, but by the time you go to Boise and pick it up and you know, you just kind of like, well, you could have just done it manually. Laura could have just done it manually. <laughs> Laura could have done it manually. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in, this, in the next project, which you may see by this one, I did have some help with like the big loop. Yeah. Yeah, I had help with that one. Uh, Tatiana said, you should do a, oh no, I missed one. Heather said, any plans to put together another video with more of your viewers' greenhouses that didn't get shown yet? Maybe sometime this winter? Yeah, we totally should do that. We should. We still have everybody's entries. Yeah, I think we need to start over. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I think I need to get better about um, the rules of how people submit because um, it got it got squirrely Did fast. It? Like people would send like 10 emails because they, and they do like one picture per email. Oh. And that was crazy. I think maybe email isn't the best approach. I think maybe like if we have them upload them to like a Google Drive or, or something. I think that'll eliminate a lot of people right away. <laughs> no, I think it'll be really easy. Like click this link and then there'll be a button that just says upload photos or, you know, whatever. I think it'll be easy. Do you? People will figure it out. Yeah. But, but email, because the problem is, is that people were also sending little thumbnails. Like they would send an email with the pictures mm -hmm. and then their email program would lower it down to a really low resolution oh, file. Sure. And then I'd have to email them and say, can you resend it, you know, mm -hmm. full resolution? I think there's ways that we can streamline it. I'll work on that. And then last question for, uh, from Tatiana, you should do a bargain bin video. Do's and don'ts of what you can buy and plant now. How bad can it look in the container? Which plants you should stay away from, et cetera. That'd be really interesting. I should go to Andrews because toward the end of the season. Do they have a bargain bin anymore? Um... They're kind of like us. Like yeah, if they it looks horrible, they much. just put it in a pile in the alley and people take it. Yeah. Um, 
but a lot of their stuff just goes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was working there, we had like the alley section, but I mean, it was really minimal. Um, and then we had one one small section, like if something got aphids or something, we'd like whisk that plant back into the background so that we could get the aphids handled. Uh, but that area was always fairly. Maybe we could go to other too. garden centers and just like ask them ahead of time. Do you have any like really crappy looking plants? Oh, they're gonna be like, no, you can't film that here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you know what? Maybe if we worked with them ahead of time, and it was like everyone understands, they also have nice plants. Well, I could just put purpose. together a, a nice looking clearance bin from the stuff I have <laughs> yeah. and just pretend like it's a garden center. <laughs> yeah. Well, They're, you kind of did that with the rough looking plants. Yeah, I, I have another couple of truckloads, not truckloads, gator loads full of those plants I need to put in the ground. So anyway, that is it for today's recap video. <sighs> I need to go get, <laughs> warm, get warm in the house. Yes. And then I think this afternoon we might do some planting. Cool. Yeah. Hope you guys are having a great day. Have a great week and we will see you in the next one. Bye.